In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people, it is Saturday, the ninth day of April. Tomorrow we will conclude this session of our parents and children. Tomorrow we shall have a session for, children, for parents, and uh, we will be able to say a few things. Today we conclude the barriers to effective communication and productive communication between parents and their children. We are, co we are going through the eight barriers to productive communication between parents and their children. We went up to number five. Today we do number six, seven, and eight. Number six is poor upbringing. Now, this means the way we were socialized. Some of us received very poor mentorship, if there was any. The tragedy is, some of us have never recovered from, from the poor hardening from our moms and our dads. We have never um, recovered, yet you are a mom today, yet you are a dad today, but you have never recovered. You are still under the shadow of your mom's failures, your dad's failures. And this we may want to trivialize it and say, no, now he's a big man, he should know better. It is not as easy as you put it. Not as easy as you'd put it. And that is why every time I'll encounter somebody who is castigating their dads or their moms, and I ask these young fellows, have you ever asked yourself who mentored your father? That is if he was ever mentored. Some of the dads you are seeing out there, they never had a mother or a dad who could mentor them. Some literally grew up like they were in the zoo. The father was not dead, the mother was not dead, but it was everyone for themselves and God for us all. <laughs> so today, the guy is finding himself in a, in, a, in a social quagmire. He's supposed to be a dad, take care of the kids, yet he is, as it is written, lost. And sometimes, do you know, there are some human beings in this world who wouldn't even know how to raise a daughter or how to raise a son. Listen to this. Most of the men who didn't have a relationship with their dads, if you ask them from the bottom of their hearts, some of them fear giving birth to sons, baby boys, because they do not know how to bring them up. They never had a relationship with their dads. So some of these men become paranoid. I don't know how to go about it. I never had a relationship with my dad. We never ever talked. Maybe my dad was never even there. Maybe the guy was just brutal. Maybe this or the other one to the extent that that man finds himself telling God, please God, give me children, but not a boy. Now you can imagine something that I have told you, that sometimes in life, what can go wrong goes wrong. Sometimes in life, what can go wrong will go wrong. You may be telling God, please God, See how I have suffered and struggled because I didn't have a dad. Please, God, if you are giving me a child, give me a baby girl. Immediately after the prayer, your wife gives birth to twins, both boys. So do you run away? No, you won't. So those boys, or that boy, a time comes and he feels the disconnect. Those are the children I ask. Do you, have you ever found out whether your father had a relationship with his dad? But you see now, we are asking our children 
to be critical enough, but their own parents have not taught them critical thinking or asking hard questions. Why? Because that section was blocked. So we are there and lost. Barrier number seven. Friends. The type of friends that your children are keeping or the type of friends that you are keeping as a mother or as a dad. I have known young mothers who have no time for their children but they have time for friends. Can you imagine? A mother of a teenage girl, a mother of a teenage son who has no time for the kids, but she has all the time for friends, going out there for sightseeing, for mentioning them. She is out there enjoying life, but she has no connection with her children. There are women of that type in this country, in fact, even outside. Her friends are more important than her children. We have got men of the same caliber. A man who is more available to his friends than he is to his children. When we are looking at the things that uh, our young people should be taken through before they say, I do, one of them is friends and in laws. These are the areas that we ignore. Yet they are the areas that later comes to haunt us. I didn't want to talk about it. You know, uh, we are trying our best. No, your best is not enough, my dear. You cannot tell us that you have all the time for your friends. If you are, if you are a driving man, your friend calls you and you pick a vehicle to go for 30 kilometers to go and meet a friend. Yet you, your son, your own blood, you cannot drop him to school. Men with teenage sons, let me ask you a question. When last did you take your son to a barber shop for a nice shave? When did you do that? But maybe you have accompanied a friend either to salon or to a barber shop, maybe. So where you are taking a friend, you have never taken your own son or your daughter. Some of you, dear men, have mistresses whom you take to salons, but you have no time to accompany your daughter to salon. You have a problem, a big one. But again, those of you who ignore the issue of friends, you are on your own. Friends can wreck your relationship with your children. Friends can wreck your marriage. Friends can wreck your business. It is as simple and true as it sounds. So, this barrier, how do you, how do you overcome this barrier? We'll be able to look at how to overcome these barriers um, some, I mean, some tomorrow and some next week. But because we need to overcome them. But one of the most important things, especially for you as mom and dad, please understand who are the friends of your sons or daughters. Because just like your friends are making it impossible for you to communicate to your children, they may also be having friends who are telling them something otherwise. That is why it is becoming so difficult for you to penetrate the world of your son or your daughter because she has friends who are showing them point B. But for you, you are talking about point S, finally, time management. It's a huge barrier to all of us, moms, dads, and children. Somebody said that it would be impossible for us to manage human beings if we have a problem managing time. Do I even need to elaborate that? No, I don't have to. But I can say it again. It would be impossible for us 
to manage human beings and manage anything else if we cannot manage our time. I'll stop there. And remind you that tomorrow we've got mass at 8 a.m. East African time. And tomorrow it is Palm Sunday. We thank God. Tomorrow it is Palm Sunday. Join me at exactly 8 in the morning for Palm Sunday Mass. Then later in the evening, we shall have the conclusion of our nine days uh, mentorship program for our young ones. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.